Are you done moving? Yeah. So the long story short of it, like moved from one town to the other and still in upstate New York. Um, did like one day where we moved all the big stuff. Okay, this is actually like kind of hilarious. So I like rented the 10 foot U-Haul box truck, right? And so it's like just me. And so I go and I get my box truck and it's just me and my box truck <laughs> against the world. Um, but I felt to help you. Huh? I was available to help you. Yeah. I guess I could have called you. I didn't want to make you drive just to help me move across town, but like that far. Um, All right, go get your box truck, ten foot box truck, just you. A box truck, and it's me, and I'm like, I can't pick up any of these big things by myself. And everybody was like a wall, but it it ended up working out, and I found people. I know I should have called you. You probably would have been there before they were, um, but. Ended up making, like, one trip, and it was, like, a very hectic and chaotic day, but all the big stuff got moved, and then that was, like, over the weekend, and then that next, like, few days and, like, that week, I just moved stuff every night, like, in my car, every night until, like, 9 or 10 p.m., and then the last night, I took, like, three loads of stuff over, because it was, it was mostly, like, my kitchen stuff, because it took, like, I have so much stuff for my kitchen. I didn't realize how much kitchen stuff I have. And like, I have a bunch of stuff that like, I don't even use. Like I barely use my blender. Well, that's not true. I use my blender, but then I have another blender. That's like those like Nutra bullet ninja type, like the little ones with like the bottles. And I never use that, but I have it. I have a food processor that I've never used. Um, which like was my mom's old food processor. And then she got a newer one. So she gave me that one. So like it was, she just, I had never used, like, the, like, one attachment, so it's, like, new-to-me food processor. But, yeah, I got so much kitchen stuff, and it was a pain in the butt to move it all over. But I'm all moved in. I think my roommate said she finished, like, unpacking all of the kitchen stuff after I left because I left Schenectady on the 17th. And I will not be back until the 7th. So I was going to be gone for a long time from upstate. So hoping that the snow wasn't too bad and I'm not going to have to, like, dig my car out of a hole because it's probably completely walled in. But it's hot. it's hot up here now, so it'll probably all melt away. That is true. I think I got a Snapchat today that it's, like, 47 in Schenectady. So It's 49 here right now. It's probably yeah. similar and connected. Um, so. and, and we didn't even get a lot here, at least like right where I am. If you go like 15 miles north, like toward Canada, mm-hmm. along the lake, then they got like several feet. But yeah, obviously it's still it's low too. Uh, like I think where I live and then where, where you live, like the Syracuse Albany track didn't get a lot. Yeah, I'm. I mean, it's kind of nice. Every Oh, my goodness. Everyone, like, you know, seeing all, like, my family friends and my family down here, they're all like, are you freezing? It's so cold up there. How you doing? Covered in snow? And it's, like, the same conversation every single time of them being like, are you freezing? You're so cold. It's so cold. And that's all they know. They're just like, it's so cold up there. And I'm like, it's literally yep. cold. I was like, yeah. rural upstate is the exact same as rural Georgia. <laughs> it's the same place. It really is. I, I tell people that all the time. Like, it's, it, it does feel, as, yeah, like the upstate New York feels like, like a southern town kind of a thing. But yeah. But just to be more north. Yeah, my dad, like, you know, because he grew up in, like, not north, north Georgia, but north-ish Georgia like before it got all developed and when we were driving around like when they came to visit in September they were like oh yeah my dad was like this looks just like my hometown like you know 15 minutes out of Schenectady and I was like yeah pretty much so it's nice I'm thoroughly enjoying it I'm also I don't know I'm like kind of back and forth on how I feel about like how warm it is in Georgia today like it might hit the 70s tomorrow let me check I heard from someone that it's going to get, like, warm tomorrow. Global warming. 
No, the high is tomorrow's in the 60s, not the 70s. Oh, goodness. The high, <laughs> I think the warmest it'll be while I'm here has a high of 67 degrees. So that'll be pretty warm. All right, welcome back to this. We have to get to the theme song, which and you're, you'll be the first one to hear it, I guess. Not really. I'll tell you about it after. But it's a new theme song. New theme song? Here, I'll, I'll set, we're going to go through it right now, and I'm going to send it to you. Because okay. the way this podcast works is I, <laughs> I add it in later. So yeah. yeah, yeah, send it to me so I can listen to it, and then I'll listen to it and give my thoughts. This is the Experience Podcast with me and someone else. It's uh, Elizabeth. I'm going to stall while she listens to the new theme, which the listeners have already heard. And I'll preface this by saying um, Owen and I worked on this. We didn't spend that much time on it. Um, and if you hate it, you should be give us a goddess feedback because I asked. <laughs> she's jamming. Uh, because I asked someone else about it, and I'll tell you what they said. Um, which we didn't really hear until they said it, and now we can't un- own it. Owen and I am talking about can't unhear it. Um, but yeah, I was gonna say if you hate it, it was all Owen's ideas. I yeah. really like that. That's it so fun. Okay. It's fun. We asked, we asked an anonymous source, and Mary said that she thought <laughs> it's like, uh, like like a hold, like hold music, like your phone, like you're on hold, like the first part. Uh, which, oh, that's, so we were like, ah, crap, that does kind of sound. So we threw a little tambourine track, um, just to give it a little bump, a little more. I can see where that came from, but it's like, yeah. it's got more of a groove. I feel like hold music but, isn't this lit. <laughs> well, and we, you know, and I struggled, like, what kind of, uh, um, what kind of feeling, what kind of mood do we want for this theme? Because the podcast doesn't really have a theme anyway. Um, and and I figured it was about time we mix up and get a new a new song. It's, it's been uh, an episode around 232 episodes. I'll say there is no theme. It's just the experience. Yeah. So it's we want something. Experience whatever we feel like talking about. It's it's calming, but I think it's got like you said, it has enough of a groove. Yeah, it's got the the jazz like the little Hammond organ sound. Yes, yes. It's almost like a like alt jazz. Yeah. Is it like a funky soul? Okay, so I'm gonna cut my hair. How much hair do you think I should cut off? A little bit. Shave my head. Just shave you. Just shave your head. I'm thinking like collarbone length hair. That's what you usually cut it down to, don't you? When you cut it a lot. Yeah, I, I like it shorter. I just. Well, basically what happened was I got my hair cut up in Schenectady by my friends. My friend had, goes to this, like, one person in this, like, one salon. Um, and so I went to that salon, and I really liked them, but my hair did not do well with that haircut. Like, it, like, messed up, like, my wave pattern and everything. And so I was like, hmm. I wasn't really sure, like, what to do. So I just, like, let it grow out to try and, like, fix it cells so that I can like cut it off to the length I want and it won't have all like the weird layers in it. Is it just that that place? Can't you go somewhere else maybe? Yeah, like I could go somewhere else in Schenectady, but then I was like, well, I'm home. I might as well cut it while I'm here because I can get it cut by the person who I always get it cut by. You know, like it got to the point where like once it was long enough, I was like, I'm almost home. I can just go to my person from home. Can't always rely on that. Every time you get a haircut, you're going to go back I knew people who did that in college. They would only get haircuts when they went home for break. That's a lot. I, I can never do that. Well, I mean, it's probably different because you don't get a haircut as often. Yeah. Well, no. I like knew like men who did that. My hair goes really fast, so I have to get it like once a month. But yeah. That is, yeah. But it's too frequent to be going. I mean, especially because, I mean, these were all people who were like local. Like Georgia, was, was it, it's different than like I gotta go to California from yeah. Atlanta to get my hair cut. Mhm. So, do you do anything fun for the holiday? 
Um, sorry, I hurt myself. Uh, what did I do? You alright? No, I just, like, was wiping something off my table, and I hit, like, one of the legs on the table. Mm, that's the worst. It's a classic bump, bump and bruise that I get from living. Um, you get it. Uh, let's see. I, uh, went to... I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know if I've said the exact location. I went to another location to visit Owen's family. Okay. I don't think you ever. Maybe you have. I don't know. Uh, you can be secretive about it. <laughs> it was location on planet Earth um, to visit Owen's family for Christmas, which I seem to do every year now. Because mm-hmm. obviously my family doesn't really do much for Christmas. Well, yeah. at least immediate family. My mother's side, you know, it's, it's Christian, but um, mm-hmm. we really we 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 never really do that much. Um, so I basically go to his. Yeah, I've gone to his family for the last like few years. Mm-hmm. That's nice. I got Christmas presents. So were you there for like a week? You just a few days? A few days, yeah. Just the days that I had off. Um. Well, what's funny is, like, uh, we got there and we counted, because he's got a bunch of siblings and everything, and we counted all the stockings, and he was like, I don't know if you, you didn't get one. Mm-hmm. Not technically family, and then on Christmas Day, we got a Christmas miracle. Santa got me a stocking. Very yeah. nice. His mom always gets me gifts. Mm-hmm. She got, oh, she got me some stuff. But um, we ended up getting the uh, his parents, like, a new pots and pans, and apparently they're they're raving about them. Very nice. Do you know what kind they were? No. Are they like they're just like non-stick ones or whatever? Oh yeah, they're they're non-stick. They're well, I think it was called like never stick. I think it's in. Oh, okay. Basically non-stick, but it's their the brands. Yeah, the brands never stick, stick whatever. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we got those. And, uh, I was excited about those. It was like a ten piece set. But yeah, apparently apparently they're uh they're using them a lot, so it was okay. from Bed Bath and Whatever, so Bed Bath and Beyond. But whatever. Bed Bath and Whatever. Bed Bath and Whatever. Actually, the one here I drove by it the other day because I was driving um with my sibling to the mall. We needed to return a candle or like exchange a candle for the scent that Grayson liked. Um, cause the one that Grayson had was like, not it. So, but on the way we passed where Bed Bath & Beyond used to be. Now it's an Academy Sports and Outdoors. And I was like, this is literally been Bed Bath & Beyond since like, I can remember. I don't know. It was just kind of crazy to me. I think it, is it kind of dying? Is that a, is that a thing? Is that, am I? Premier Mall is not dying yet. It's still got. That's a whatever. Maybe the mall too, but. Oh. Well, I feel like most malls are dying, but Premier Mall is doing all right for itself, I think. But I think Bed Bath & Beyond is kind of dying. The the mall in Syracuse, Destiny USA, is dying so badly that they're changing the traffic pattern of the highway. Um, to so make like, it go. So for so right now, there's there's a highway 81. I don't know if you know. It goes like straight through Syracuse. Um, like north south. Mm-hmm. And one of the exits, like basically right in the middle of the city, yeah, maybe like toward the west side, is the Destiny USA Mall. It's like I guess one of the biggest malls in the state. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I guess what they're now doing is they're going to cut out that part that goes through the city and just do the little beltway system that a lot of cities do. Mm-hmm. Um, so it makes you basically it forces local, more local traffic, especially to the mall. I don't know if it's actually for the mall, but it's definitely, they're changing all that, and it, it's like a whole big project, and it's kind of funny. I'm like, the mall's already dying. It's already pretty much dead. It's okay. going to be sad by the time they finish the route. <laughs> yeah, I've been to that mall, and, like, half the stores are, I, I COVID really hurt, obviously, but half the stores are, like, empty. Like, not even just closed, like, empty. Like, dark, and lights out, empty. There's nothing in there. That's how it is. There's like a mall. I think it's the Rotterdam Mall called like Rotterdam Square or something. Ow, don't mind me. I'm just popping my back. Um, and like there's like some like weird electronics store and then like a kind of like a knickknack comic book 
various, it's like a lunchbox, you know, that store lunchbox. Oh, well, yeah. Like a little, modern picnic store, almost. Yeah, for like oh, fan, sci-fi, fandom type. Culture, pop culture store, I think. Yeah. So, um, so it was like that, but it was not lunchbox, but it was similar to that, but it was more of like a comic book store and video games. And then a movie theater. And then there's this place called The Local, I want to say, and it's kind of like a catch-all entertainment, axe-throwing, games, bar thing. And then allegedly an aquarium. That sounds like that has everything you need. Which I have I've not frequented the aquarium. I'm uncertain if I wish to frequent the aquarium. Oh, all right. We... Jury's still out on that one, I'll be honest. And then there's, like, another place just on Union Street. It's, like, a mile and a half or so down from Union College that's also an aquarium. It's, like, this tiny little, like, storefront, and it's, like, aquarium. I'm like, there's no way this is an aquarium. Pet store. That sounds like a pet store. Yeah. So, I, I don't know what's going on with that, but. Just upstate New Actually, no, it's not even upstate things. It's just connected things. Yeah, these are super specific. Very specific, weird Schenectady things. Well, I don't know if you announced last time on the show, but you are staying there for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I will be there for the next six months. Um, which means you have to brace the winter, and we already touched on this you know, earlier, but mm-hmm. I think you're doing fine. I'm doing okay. Yeah. Honestly, I've really been enjoying it. I, we had, so like that big snowstorm that went through Minnesota and then kind of came over, right? It, it, it was the, uh, not last week, but the week before. Or yeah. last week. We, Never, I don't know. Last week. The week before Christmas? Or, yeah. It was like the week, yeah, week. week before Christmas when, um, they were saying that, like, our region was expecting, you know, 6 to 24 inches of snow hmm. from that snowstorm. So, like, right before that, we had just had a snow, and we had gotten 6 inches, which was very exciting. Um, then we had the snowstorm blow in, and all week, <laughs> I didn't even know there was a snowstorm coming because I don't listen to the radio or read the news or anything. Like, I just realized that I don't keep up with Schenectady news unless someone else tells me Schenectady news. Um, you get like a winter weather warning thing. Yeah, I, I did get that eventually, like once the storm came in. But <laughs> You're in the storm. <laughs> yeah, like once the storm was there, I was like, oh, yeah, it's a winter storm. Yeah. But my my boss at work was like, hey, I know you told me that your flight is on Saturday. Just so you know, there's a big old storm coming and that might impact your flight. And it ended up only delaying my flight by, like, an hour, maybe, like, 50 minutes, which was fine. I just had to rebook on a later flight for my connecting flight because I missed my connecting flight because of it. But because they delayed it so early, they were able to rebook for me before I even got on the first plane. So that was totally fine. But that storm, we only got, like, five inches of snow unless we got some snow after I left. But it ended up being really warm, like, it was above freezing. For most of the storm, and so we really didn't get that much snow. Yeah. It, it was like, like, yeah, five inches. So I haven't experienced, like, a big, huge snowstorm yet. But when I got to Minnesota, there was already, like, a foot of snow on the ground, and it was snowing when I got there. It was also zero degrees. So if we were worried about my ability to handle the cold, I have now existed below zero for, like, four straight days. And, like, one of the days the high was negative five. The high. It was negative 20 when I was outside. Outside. Yeah, I was outside. I went, I, okay, well, that was only for, like, a short time, because that was the day that I left Minnesota, so I was just outside to, like, bring my stuff to the car. But the days that I actually, like, went and played outside, it was, like, negative 10 to 15. Hmm. Maybe, maybe, like, negative 7. It was actually so cool, though. Here, let me show you. My eyelashes froze. For our listeners, she's going to start showing uh, pictures. 
I'm going to show a picture of my frozen eyelashes. Oh, that's glare. Glare, glare, no, glare. Okay, I'm just going to text it to you. But yeah, like, like the little, like, tips of my hair that were, like, sticking out, because, like, you know, my hair's unruly. They were frozen and all, like, white. And then my eyelashes were all frozen. I looked kind of crusty, but it was fun. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't even get, even get that cold here. Yeah, so. like, I, I mean, after that, it's going to, I think the biggest thing is just going to be what I have to drive while it's physically snowing. That I have not done yet. But I've been given lots of advice from the other Edisons that are up there and the ones who were also, like, born in the north about how to drive on snow, so we're just good. Slow. <laughs> There's no like secret. Probably just drive slowly and leave more space. <laughs> more space, you know. Um, so you didn't have to drive the last few times it snowed. I did, but like not while it was actively snowing. Oh, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, well, yeah. Once you get into like a whiteout condition and you can't and you lose visibility, then you're. Right, then you're not driving anyway. But I mean, like, yeah, it was never, like, crazy, but, like, my roommate and I were, like, driving to work together, and so she was just driving anyway that day. Okay. So, like, she drove. Because I was like, well, I really haven't driven on it yet, and I know we're going to be, like, out late we had, like, a, a dinner party after work. And so she just drove, and it was fine. But she was more comfortable. I was like, I don't want to make the first time I'm driving on the snow, like, with someone else in the car late at night. You know? Especially because the temperature did drop. We were kind of worried that it would drop below freezing and that the roads would ice over, so. Yeah, they don't always plow everything, depending on how big your street is. Yeah, we have, luckily, we're off, like, a main road of sorts. It's not, like, a like a main main road, but I think they are pretty good about plowing the road that we live on. It does become, like, kind of residential, but it's, like, a connecting road to get to 890. Um, like, you go down it a little further past where we live, and there's that. And then we have, like, a plow person who's hired by our complex to plow the parking lot. Yeah, so do we, but we, they haven't been plowing our parking lot very well this year. Or maybe, uh, maybe. Just... Like about, actually we, we ran into the plow because the day I left, my flight was supposed to take off at 5.45 a.m. And given my experience trying to get out of Pittsburgh from Thanksgiving, it was not fun and I missed my flight because of TSA. So I was really worried because a bunch of the flights from the day before, when it was actively snowing all day, those were all canceled and delayed. So I was like, everybody and their grandma is going to be at this airport. And the Albany airport, as wonderful as it is, it's a, it's a good airport. It's a small airport. And I was like, they are not equipped for the amount of people who are going to be trying to get through security at this time. So I got there, like, really early and it kind of sucked, but it was fine. TSA. I can't play TSA. We're, we're trying. Some of them are. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, like, not their fault at all. There was just a lot of people, and it's a small airport. So, I knew the line was going to be long, so I just got there really early. I don't think I've ever seen more than, like, four people on the Syracuse airport line. Like, I have pre-check, but sometimes, like, there's, like, three people on that line, and there's no one in the regular line. I'm like, well, it's like, well, why don't I just go on the regular line? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm thinking, hoping I get pre-check. Hoping? You could just pay yeah. for it. I mean, I guess that's true. I'm going tomorrow. Tomorrow is my pre-check appointment. So it's really more, I guess, I'm hoping that it goes through, because I've heard that it, like, can take up to an amount of time, but a lot of people have gotten it, like, 
faster than that amount of time. So I'm hoping I'll have it in time to fly back. And then I don't have to stand in regular security at Hartsfield Jackson. But I mean, either way, it'll be fine. I don't remember how long it took. It's, you might, it is a bit funny. I think you just buy less screening. You can buy your way out of security. Yeah, I kind of, like, when they said an interview, I kind of expected them that like, they're, they're going to, like, ask me questions and stuff. I think they just, like, give it to you. And so you, like, prove that you're, like, a nice person or whatever. Well, I guess, I, I, I assume they, they do a background check. Yeah, like, they run the background check. That's probably what part of the cost is, anyway. It's paying for the background check that they're going to run. Yeah, and you don't have too many things on your criminal record, so you were probably good yeah. to go. I think I should be okay. Just a few of those. Some small demeanors. Yeah, back back in your day. Yeah, back in the day. (laughs) That was a real troublemaker. Mystery. But but you don't really fly that. I I guess you fly a bit. I don't know. I I feel like you don't fly as often. I feel, well, I really never did until I moved to New York. But I have... I will be flying back to Atlanta. Well, that's not true. Not in February. I will be flying to Florida in February. I'm going back to Atlanta in March. I'm flying back to Atlanta in April. Flying back to Atlanta in May. And then... Live in Atlanta. I mean, come on. Probably making a trip to Houston. I know. I really should have picked a closer rotation (laughs) for the number of times I have to go back. Um, It's all for weddings and the Taylor Swift concert. But... That's like important. So, did you actually get tickets? Yeah, I have tickets to the Saturday Atlanta show. It was a stressful experience. I guess we, you didn't get. I didn't follow it that closely, but you didn't get Ticketmaster scammed or. I mean, it was still like terrible because we were gonna get better seats than we had, and then they like were like taken from us, and then. We ended up with ones that are like literally in like the highest section of the stadium. That's all that was available. And if we had like tried to like leave that line to do like a different day, because only one of my friends that I was trying to get tickets with got the code from Ticketmaster and they still waited in line for six hours before we finally like were able to like, like actually secure the tickets. So it was kind of nuts. It was not fun. But I wanted those lower bowl tickets, but it is what it is. And it's still going to be a great concert anyway. So I am very excited. It's going to be good. Also, the date of the show that we're going to is April 29th, which is like kind of cool because in one of her songs on the new album, She's like, do you really want to know where I was April 29th? And it's like, we're going on April 29th. So that will probably be my Instagram caption because I'm basic, but I don't even care. Yeah, listeners, if you want um, generic white girl stuff, be sure to follow Elizabeth on Instagram. Yeah, follow me for generic white girl content. I actually haven't posted in, like, months, so it probably wouldn't be very exciting. <laughs> At- Gilby, 23. At Illy Gilly. <laughs> Illy underscore Gilly. <laughs> I made it in high school. Uh, that's, uh, <laughs> I deserve to be bullied. Elementary school. <laughs> I, can't. I don't know. Did Instagram exist when I was in middle school? It's got, I had it. Instagram... What came first, Instagram or Snapchat? I know Snapchat started to exist, like, my eighth grade year. Instagram was initially released in 2010. So. Yeah. Yeah, so I would have been in middle school. There you go. I think I got it. Before my junior year of high school? That's pretty late. 
I feel like. Yeah, I mean, I didn't get Snapchat until during, until like in my sophomore year of high school. So how were you communicating with your, with the kids, the fellow, the fellow kids? I did not communicate with the kids. The kids, no. I was not a cool kid. No, you had to. Open. I talked to very few people. I mean, I pretty much I think my communication with the kids was whoever I was on a sports team or in youth group with, and it was like in person communication. I don't think that was really it. Then your mom. My bestie, Sharon. Yeah. Oh, I'm also going to two other concerts in the spring, but they're both in New York. One's in Albany. It's Noah Khan. And then the other one is, I don't know where it is, but it's Mount Joy. So I think that'll be pretty cool as well. But both of those are like in um May, April. I think they're actually with like in the same week. Like one's over the weekend and then one's on like a Tuesday night. Tuesday night concert. Yeah, that's the one in Albany. It's going to be worth it, though. So, they, they, do they still not let you take vacation? Or? It's like PTO, so I'm going to have to, like, very strategically do that because of all these weddings that I have to go to. Are they, are they like, the week-long variety, or? Just- so... All of these, um, I'm in a wedding in the end of July, so that'll be when I'm on my next rotation. And that one, I'm assuming I'll likely have to be there earlier for various things. But my cousin's wedding that's in February is on a Friday. It's like a Friday night. Um, So I'm going to have to take off Thursday, Friday. Which, like, it's not the end of the world. But I'll have to travel on Thursday, and then I'll be there Friday. And then I'm trying to work with my family right now to book that, because they're going to have to acquire me from either one of – there's two airports that are kind of close. So I need to plan which airport and then plan my family retrieving me from the airport. There, uh, you don't get to use it snow days at work. You don't get those – I don't know if it gets snow days. It's like permissive time. So it's like, in theory, I could take as much time off as I want. But also it like, I don't know. So it's unlimited. Yeah. But I'm also taking three weeks off of work right now. Yeah. Come on, get to work. Well, they always tell us to take two weeks between our rotations. I only took one in the summer, so I'm taking the extra week now. Is that how it works? It just They tell you to take two weeks? Between the rotations, yeah. Just, just They say fun. one to two weeks between the rotations. Just for fun. Well, it's, you know, sometimes people are moving, so it's like more so, I guess, for the people who are moving, but... But this holiday season, it's like I was going to take the two weeks anyway, but then we get the second off for New Year's Observed, and then Evan's birthday is on the 5th. And so I was like, well, I'd like to just stay until after his birthday. So it doesn't really make any sense to start my rotation virtually. Mm, I guess so. Tuesday. Although I'm getting to the point where I'm getting kind of bored, so I honestly might get on my computer next week and clean up my email inbox or something. You haven't found activities to keep yourself busy? Actually, I am really busy. I was very busy today. This is like the first time I've like laid down. <laughs> you don't even sleep. You just... I don't sleep. I don't rest ever. I don't need sleep. Sleep is for the week. No, but I mean tomorrow I have that appointment. I'm getting my hair cut. Probably gonna try and see some friends because I have a few of those. Mm. Not many. 
because I'm uncool, but some friends yeah. who I haven't gotten to see. So I'm hoping that that will work out. But we shall see. I would like for it to. And then New Year's Eve, I have like a little, it's like a small New Year's Eve get together. So I think that'll be fun. Watch the, the college football playoff games. Uh, uh, yeah, like, is that this, that's this weekend? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. By the time the show comes out, you've already done it, so you can talk about it in the past. Gotcha. Should I, like, talk about it? Oh, wait, should I, what if I just, like, guess, and I'm like, man, that, like, Georgia-Ohio State game, can you believe in the third quarter that, Stetson Bennett got injured and had to go out and then they had to play their backup and say something like that and then like what if it like actually happened? That'd be so crazy. You should have said something generic enough so that way it could sound right. Yeah. Well, that wouldn't have been fun if it was generic. It needs to be like very ridiculously specific. And then it's like, how did she know that? Because either way, it's probably not going to be right. Are those games on the those games are on the thirty first? Yeah, right? I think they're both on the thirty first. Let me check. Let me ask Espen. Yeah, no, thirty first. Oh, FSU is coming back in the Cheez It Bowl. Great, man. Seventeen to eleven against Oklahoma. Cheese it, thank you for sponsoring a bowl game. Did you see that they moved the bad boy mowers from the Gasparilla Bowl to the Pinstripe Bowl? I did see that. It was the Is bad that- boy mowers pinstripe bowl, and I was like, dang, I wish uh, that would have been so good. I just want to be in the bad boy mowers bowl so badly. Do you? I just think of this can you imagine the swag? Bad boy mowers. Like so good. Do you, you think we like uh, get lawnmowers? Do you think they would get us lawnmowers? Grayson, are you coming on the podcast? Oh, you're not Grayson. No, either way. Would you like to come on the podcast? Sure. It's a big Grayson. Surprise guest, it's Evan. How's it going? Surprise, first time guest. Mm, yeah, that's, that's not true. Time. No, it's not true. It's been on the background. Yeah, you were in the, the background, background one time, yeah. I'll say, because I was doing the podcast and you were doing your homework. Yeah. And you commenting. I think Grayson's been on before, too. Uh, definitely. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Okay. What about the symptoms? What were we looking up? I don't even remember. Oh, what time the games are. Yeah, I'm, like, looking up the... This is taking a long time. This I'm is a... It's, it's both on New Year's Eve. It's the, it's the Peach Bowl and the Fiesta Bowl this yeah, year. The Fiesta Bowl is earlier. Like, two or Probably, four. yeah, the 2 p.m. Probably game. Probably four, so that 4 they can go right into the next game. Yeah, it's the 4 p.m. game. State Farm Stadium, Glendale, Arizona. Oh, I saw this like mock up of the um where the World Cup stadiums would be and they're like all over like they're in there's like there's there's like a Mexico City stadium, there's a stadium in Toronto, and then like they're all over the US too. Yeah, I think sixteen different cities, something like that. How does that work? Like with Ketter Cutter, Qatar? What's the proper way to say it? Both are all, all of them. Just keep saying it. <laughs> Cater. Um, okay, well, I know that's not right. <laughs> I know it's either Cutter or Qatar. Yeah, but both are. I feel like Cutter is how, like, they, like, want you to say it, but then Qatar was how all the reporters were saying it, so I just, I don't know. No? No comment, Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> anyway that's the real I, struggle um, I thought it would be interesting because I mean if you're playing all these games with all these different time zones I feel like it would just mess with people 
when they have to travel to whichever stadium is going to be the one. Yeah, so games are like three days apart during the uh, whatever the play between your group to group play. Mm-hmm. So like you'll play in maybe LA and then three days later play in New York or wherever they're having it near New York. So yeah, I guess. But I mean, they're spaced uh-huh. out enough that it shouldn't really. Oh, so is this a chance so that you can see all the teams at your, like, one stadium, in theory? All of American sports deals with the time zone shifts all the time. That's true. Yeah, I mean, there's, like, back-to-back MLB games where you're playing in Toronto and then you're playing in San Jose. Yeah, I guess it's like when they play the World Series and they go back and forth between the, uh, like, when the Braves were playing and... Any series in, in baseball and basketball too. Just, 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 yeah, there's everything but the NFL, and even then, they go yeah. from like Seattle to London. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess that's like really not that bad. Yeah, so I don't know how many games will be in Atlanta. I don't think they've decided yet, but at least some group play will be. I doubt that any of like the semifinals or finals will be will be here. Really? You don't think so? Imagine they'll give you they'll give some good game just because of the Atlanta United just because Atlanta United has done so well in the last few years. Yeah. Probably a quarter final game will be it. I think we should get the final. <laughs> well, I agree. Why don't you tell someone about that? <laughs> I'm I'm gonna write a letter. <laughs> I think you should give Atlanta the final. That's it. Yeah, it's just because I spoke. <laughs> you walked through that door. I thought you were Grayson. I figured. Yeah. That's, I don't know. It's just something Grayson would do. <laughs> <laughs> we rearranged Grayson's room today, and it was an event. An event? Yes. Well, because I don't know how long it's been since she dusted in there, but... It was dusty, and so it was like moving stuff, and then dusting everything, and vacuuming up all the dust, and then moving more stuff, and like rearranging, and it was like a whole thing. Very exciting stuff going on down <laughs> in the southeast, really. Like it's like, yeah, no, I got nothing. You're like, it's riveting. I'm sorry to the listeners. I I don't don't know what you want me to say. Well, after this, I'm going to watch Glass Onion so I can provide my movie critic review on that next time. Uh, Yeah, I watched Glass Onion. It's a trip. That's what I've heard. It seems like it's fun. I was going to watch it and then we didn't get around to it, so we watched it separately and he texted me. What did he say? Hold on. No, he said, I just watched Last Onion, Class Onion. It was too confusing. <laughs> and I said, and, and, and I, I don't know how much of a spoiler this is, but like, I said, like, they explain it at the end. Like, like, like the first one where they explain, they go through what happens. Yeah. You know, like, mystery movies. And he said, but the whole time before that, I didn't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that kind of the point yeah. of a mystery movie? That's what I told him. I said, that's kind of the point. It's a mystery. Oh, look at us. We're on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. And he, then he got excited about something else. Um, I saw, like, a, I think it was a tweet, maybe, talking about it and how people were like, it's almost like Agatha Christie and, like, Hercule Perot novels. It is, but, like, more comedy. Yeah, because it's, yeah. Almost like a... Daniel Craig playing... (laughs) Is it Daniel Craig? Yeah. Yeah, Daniel Craig playing a southern man. I know, I could not get over his accent. His accent, his Louisiana accent, like... That was, that was like my big hold-up for the whole Knives Out movie, was just like, you can't sound like this. No, the same, (laughs) when I watched Knives Out, I was like... If you're a detective, just be British. <laughs> I know, but I mean, we British. have like Matlock and yeah, Terry yeah. Mason and Monk. And what's yeah. that movie? Yeah. The, um, 
What, what was that movie? My Cousin Benny. I was going to say My Cousin Benny. Oh, Mississippi Burning. That's the one with the lawyer, right? The one with the lawyer. I, I That one, I think, is about, like, a lawyer and people doing the, uh, the college students doing, like, the bus rides through Mississippi in protest of civil rights. Like, against the Jim Crow laws. Uh, yeah, I think so. All right, well, that's a good poll. That's a pretty random poll. It was at, like, at work yesterday, one of my coworkers was describing, like, a show they were watching on Amazon. And someone else was like, oh, yeah, is that the show with the girl? <laughs> <laughs> I do that. I do that. Show with the girl. Yeah. Was it the summer I turned pretty? No, it wasn't. Oh, probably not. It could have been any show. It's, it was the show with the girl. The show with and then I, with the guy also, and she said, yeah, that one. Like, it was with the boys? No, it wasn't. It was, um, it was the peripheral. Mm. I really haven't looked that much into what Amazon's putting out lately. At, uh, at your recommendation, I have, I'm, I'm in letter canning. Yeah, they just put out a new season. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm, Apparently. I'm Episode one of the new season is like a very Letter Kenny esque episode. Like it's like peak Letter Kenny. Do you like it, Daniel? I like season four and five. I think it's good. Yeah, it's good. Who is talking about there? It's 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 very Canadian. I love the humor in the show. It's so enjoyable to me, and it's like not Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> And it, I like that it's not Trailer Park Boys. I could not do Trailer Park Boys. I just like the alliterations. Yeah. I like when they do the... the get after it. It's, it's fast. It's, it's got to be up there with Veep in terms of jokes per second. Yeah. Oh. It's like fa- rapid fire. Look, I wore my rainbow socks today. For the viewers, it's like an ombre, stripy ankle sock that is rainbow. For the viewers, for the listeners. For, for the, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried so hard. <laughs> I still got it wrong. Oh, goodness. All right, uh, I'll let you go. Like, and on that note, I'm cut off from the podcast for today. <laughs> yep, things. Um, we'll catch you next time after you move for another four weeks. Um, after your next seven months of move. Yeah. It was a very chaotic December. Apparently. You able to catch me before February, certainly. <laughs> January is looking like my least busy month coming up, so. Oh, yeah. We're going to record like 10 episodes that month then. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thanks for coming on. Yep. Bye, y'all.